name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom, St. Joseph, St. Aloysius Gonzaga, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the first reading in the Old Testament, of course, we see the kingdom of Israel is very much a type of the church. And so we have, in this case, a usurper of the throne, someone who seized the throne, the head of the kingdom of Israel without proper authority. And how eventually, through the through cooperation with the priests of the temple, there was the reestablishment of the proper head of the nation and of the, of the temple, you might say. The king was supposed to be the, really the one who watched over not only the civil practices, but also was to make sure that the religious practices were observed. And we know then the stories that we've been hearing in the past Ahab invited the pagans into the kingdom, established false worship because he wasn't doing his job. And now we see where finally it is being cast out, where they slew this pagan priest of Baal before the temple after, first of all, erecting the proper one who was to hold the throne. It's all about proper authority and not to be a usurper on taking matters into your own hands. And of course, that is important because in many cases with the Protestant revolt, that is what has happened that someone has usurped the throne because the whole point is that God has established a church. He has established the bishops, the, the apostles and their successors, and he has established a proper authority and the Protestant revolt pretty much decided they would take over the throne and decide they are their own pope or their own uh, spiritual head, which of course is foolishness. But uh, we see that happening even today, usurpers of the throne. And we pray that um, God will restore to his kingdom, all proper authority to those who have received it. And especially we pray for the reunification of the church, that all those who have established their own magisterium will understand that there's only one magisterium, the teaching of Christ, which has been handed on to his church. We hear in the gospel of Matthew, especially once again, part of the whole Sermon on the Mount, our Lord is laying out his spiritual teachings. He talked about the importance of mortification. You know, if your eye is leading, into your, leading you into sin, cut it out. Of course, he wasn't talking literally to poke it or cut it out, but to do penance. And here he's reminding us of the importance of being detached from the treasures of this world and be striving to store up for yourself treasure in heaven, which is, of course, done by practicing acts of charity. That's how we store up treasure in heaven, by doing all those meritorious deeds, whether acts of faith, hope, and charity, but especially charity, which is, stores up for us in our spiritual bank account in heaven, which is more important than any bank account you have here on earth. And so he's talking about that, being detached from those material things, and then he talks about the importance of a certain interior integrity of the soul. And when he talks about the lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is sound, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be in darkness. Fulton Sheen one time said, you know, that there's that old saying, you are what you eat. If you eat garbage, if you eat junk food, you know it's going to have an impact on your physical health, well-being. If you even eat poison, it'll have a detrimental effect on you. But he also said, tell me what you read and I'll, I'll tell you who you are. 
that if your eye is reading garbage, looking at garbage, you might say it's also going to fill your soul with garbage. And so he's talking about the importance of having a good um, sound, purifying your senses so that especially the eyes, you know, it really is the main thing by which we get so much information, draw so much into our souls through our eyes and how it is terrible if we were to lose our eyesight but our Lord, of course, restored many blind people to their vision. And it was to be as only a physical example of a spiritual ailment that he was trying to, to show forth that he could cure even more, which is spiritual blindness. So that it's so important that what we do with our senses, but especially our eyes, that we read good material, that we read good things that are in accordance with the teaching of Christ. Don't waste our eyes on foolish things and especially upon lies, um, which of course, there are so many things in the media today which are not good for the eye and not just impurity, but also falsehood and lies that are being spread and disseminated that we need to pray for the good gift of discernment. What is true, what is false, what is good, what is bad. And if we do that, then we will have true light in our souls. We want to pray especially that, you know, whatever we do, that we'll only help further and not, as he says, um, sadden the gift of the Holy Spirit that we have received, who is, of course, the greatest light that we have received for our, for our spiritual vision. So today as we contemplate the gospel and the readings today, let us pray for Holy Mother Church. Let us pray for all those who are seeking the truth that they will have the light that their eyes need to, have, to be able to see and to follow their way to Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.